My name is Daniela Tencio. Currently, I'm a faculty member of Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, eh, Colombia, in the Department of Architecture and Design. My name is Pedro Ferracini. I'm associate professor at Design at the Design Studio and a coordinator of industrial design career, both at Rosario National University, and I have also my professional practice as an architect. My name is Marcos Dana. I'm teaching a few different courses at the university. Uh, some of them are related uh, more with representation and others with design. And I have my own practice as, uh, as an architect. My experience at SIR it really changed the way to see the world, but more specifically how to approach the design process in architecture. but also how to think about research, right? It's not just like thinking about a final design, but also all the things that maybe can change or make it different at the end. The curriculum is right now in current uh, reform, and one of the most important changes is the inclusion of the computational thinking set of courses. I really think this is a great opportunity to start impacting the curriculum, to start including a very speculative way of thinking in the university. Courses focus uh, on a set of procedures. It will be just like a series of processes uh, related with computational thinking, and it includes different techniques, software, design processes, and also ways of thinking in architecture and design. What I'm doing in Los Andes this will be translated uh, next semester in, in also digital fabrication. In the near future, we will be also including uh, robotic processes um, in, in, these, in these procedures that we're working right now. This is the starting point of an entire change in the curriculum. I'm actually starting right now uh, a research, a research for three years, and these this project that we made at Tire will be actually the starting point for this new research. I call it program materialism, and it will be something like translations and processes and representation between images, objects, and machines. This specifically will be kind of like creation research based on a series of prospective uh, experiments that will be exploring the relationships between uh, the discipline, challenging technology, as a medium, as a way of uh, visual thinking, but also uh, ontologies and representations. Computational thinking and robotic uh, would be kind of like the design tools for this. The methodology that I would use would be research through design. The main objective of, of this research would be challenging the aesthetics notions of an eligibility of a material to expose uh, the different procedures that allow to reveal maybe emerging properties uh, from con control programming and robotic uh, manufacturing. The representation would be like a really important, let's say, factor in this investigation. The work will be ex exhibited uh, in two years and then in three years, hopefully, will be published um, in a book. Professor Claudio Rossi and I coordinated the workshop uh, that we call it Non-Fictional Cities. Ten universities participated, I can mention some of them, Architectural Association, Melbourne University, Estrelka Institute, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, Universidad de Simón Bolívar, eh, Universidad de Buenos Aires, and Universidad de Monterrey. For this workshop, we wanted to think in a visual, like in visual scenarios, not only considering the current situation about COVID-19, but also uh, current problems that maybe sometimes we don't think about them when we design, such as pollution, violence, the collapse of health transportation systems, global warming, among others. And this was to promote relationships that must be explored from the architectural perspective. The workshop also suggested new ways of making the evident fictional city, or what we can call maybe fictional city, but it is actually the reality. We 
uh, wanted just to start with different questions of each one of the universities. Every school had like a trigger to start uh, thinking about that possible uh, scenario. In our case, the proposal uh, were based on something that we call new territories, fantastic realities. Our students develop uh, scenarios based on current problems in, in Colombia. They work, for example, in new territories, thinking the aerial as a new space or the underground, or how about living in the mountain, or what happened if the city in the future. What I think is really valuable about this kind of approaches or workshops or dynamics, let's say, is that in a very short time with a very specific or particular condition, students are capable uh, of thinking uh, the unimaginable. It doesn't matter if you use it or not, you are already being transformed by technology. Technology is in between us at every moment, and that because we are using new tools, we are now having new tools for new discussions, so we are uh, defining new ways of doing architecture. We can push forward our profession into a next level. My office actually is an, an extension of the school, you know, and vice versa, actually. We really ensure to work in the same way that we do at the university. I couldn't imagine actually one without the other, mainly because we think our school and our profession both oriented to do stuff. To build, to design, to change reality. We are actually giving an AI seminar which explores AI tools in the design process of architecture and landscape. And we also presented together with Ana Valderrama, Casey Rem, and of course Marcos, the, the first um, project of Rosario National University that involves artificial intelligence tools in order to produce or try to co-produce uh, architecture that uh, works responsibly with landscape. We are not only doing the seminar, but also that seminar is part of a research project in order to try to determine if AI is helpful to try to make a better relationship between architecture, cities, and things made, made by humans and nature. We are using AI in a more, I would say, a speculative way. We ask students to work with many different scales using facades, using satellite images and plans. Uh, discussion during all this exercise were not only focused on how technology contributes to design, but about introducing new topics like ethics, politics, economics. We like to talk and discuss about what resides behind all the machinery, what keeps the machinery working, what pushes the machinery forward. I believe that AI nowadays is a game changer because with a really kick setup, you can have like very fast introduction to AI, the first step at least. That gives an opportunity to smaller studios, resources for more, more like everyone, and try to democratize the tool and the, and, the, and the way that you just process things. As designers, no matter what we have to do, we always start with a problem or a concept or an idea. Technology help us to move those limits to push the profession forward in many aspects. So I believe so much more could be done, you know, updated, reformulated, explored, to make better cities, for example. The technology could help us to optimize and reduce our carbon footprint at the same time. This is something that everybody all around the world are talking about right now. And that is something that, as an architect, we all should care about it. So it could help us in any single step of the construction process, in the selection of the different materials, or even in the creation of new ones uh, that could be more sustainable. I believe that we have to define which is the role of architecture and architects first for, for this answer. And, and then how, how it is enhanced with the, with the dominance of these powerful new tools. Because of the capacity of managing huge amount of data processed by AI, it changed the roles that architects have to play. And then we have the discussion about how this tool is managed. And 
moral or, or more ethical ways of using it. But I believe that it's a game changer anyway. We are using it in a speculative way to, to see new horizons, refining the role of architects and also architects uh, as educators, trying to change the position that we take on the design process.